In this lesson, we are going to add a WYSIWYG text editor for the content and a date picker for the published ad. Before we get started, let's head over to the resources, views, layouts, app.blade.php. And a couple of lessons back when we were deleting categories, we included jQuery, we included Popper, we included bootstrap.js. But this is not actually necessary because if you go over to the resources.js bootstrap.js file, you see that in this file, Lavo automatically requires Lodash, requires Popper.js, requires jQuery, and requires Bootstrap all in this file, even requires Ixius. And it also loads this file, which is the Bootstrap, in this app.js file, and webpack.mix.js, which is a webpack wrapper, bundles all of these plugins into a file called public.js. So if you go to public.js, folder you see that there's a app.js file there so this is minified javascript but this file contains jquery bootstrap popper.js exios even lodash so in the app.blade.php there's no need to include these three files because it's already been included from the app.js file so if you scroll to the top you see that there's an app.js file so now let's go ahead and include our tricks editor so right here I'm just going to say tricks editor. I'm just searching that on Google. Then you want to open up the documentation. So this is the documentation and you can read more about the tricks editor. But to include the CSS and the JavaScript into our project, what you want to do is just search for CDN tricks and then open up this website called cdnjs.com and then you're going to copy the JavaScript for the tricks editor. And we want to go to the page for creating post, which is right here, create.blade.php. And we want to include this file. Because remember, we only want the tricks editor to be loaded on the create post page. So we are going to define the section called scripts and end section right here. And we'll paste the script for the tricks editor. But we also want to include the CSS, right? So let's go to our app.blade.php and add a yield for CSS. So yield CSS, which means we can now define a CSS section. So we'll go back to the create.blade.php and I'll define a section called CSS and I'll end section right here. Now I'll just come back to my browser and copy the CSS for tricks. Then I'll add a link and I'll paste that right there. So if we come back to our application, and refresh this page, view the page source, you realize we have the tricks CSS linked right here. And at the bottom, we have the tricks JavaScript. Next step, we need to define what field the tricks should work with. And all we need is this piece of code right here. So I'll copy this and come to my create and go to where we have our text area for content, which is right here. And I'll paste this right here. So. How do we do this? Let me just delete this. What we need to do is give this a name of content and then we give this an ID that we want. In this case, I'm just going to use content. And then when we mount the tricks editor, we just pass in content right here. Okay. And make sure it is hidden because this is what is going to be sent to the server. So this is all we need to make the tricks editor work. So if we come back to our browser, give this a quick refresh. Great, you can see that we have a tricks editor right here and we can use to build our content. But for some strange reason, the tool bag does not work. And after investigation, I found out it's because the script in the app.blade.php is actually linked in the head. And this is by default with Lava, right? So what you wanna do is make sure that it's not linked here. You wanna link it at the bottom of the page, okay? So this is the bottom. You want to include it right here just before the yield scripts. And then you want to remove this defer directive. So the defer directive is kind of telling the browser to not execute this JavaScript file until the HTML page has loaded. But since it's at the bottom of the script or the bottom of the page, there's no need for that anymore. And you want to make sure you remove it, okay? Because it's not really going to function well with the other scripts we have. Okay, so if I refresh now and if I type in something, you can see that the tricks editor correctly formats everything which means that we can have list right here with our content 
we can left align or right align content just like that okay so it looks like everything actually works perfectly okay so we have our tricks editor working perfectly the next step is to work with the date picker and for the date picker we are going to use a library called flat picker okay so this is the flat picker website we can just visit the flat picker website go to the get started tab and it just gives us a link to the css so since we also want the flat picker to only exist in the create.blade we are just going to include it down here so we want to include it here so the link is going to be in the css section and the script is going to be in the js section okay now one last step to set up the flat picker we just need to add a script right here and call the flat picker function because once we include this script it's going to define a flat picker function for us and we pass it with the id of the field that we want to use as a date picker so published at in this case which means we have to make sure that the published at field has this id so i'm just going to scroll up to where we have published at and make sure the id is published at okay right there so the id is published at okay so it looks like this is publish so there's like a typo right there so just make sure that this is fixed so it's published at awesome so if we come right now refresh you can see that it's grayed out and if we click right there it pops up a date speaker that we can use to select when the date or when this article should be published okay but we can also make sure that the user can select a time so we can pass an object to this flat picker function and pass in enable time set to true and if we refresh the page and click here you can see that once you select the date you can now select a specific time of the day when this article should be published awesome so make sure you check out the documentation for the flat picker in case you want to have some more options events and hooks and stuff like that but now we have the published ad and we have the tricks editor finally let's just go ahead and make sure that the published ad is actually being saved to the database okay so we're just going to come to the post controller and in the store method right here we were not passing the published ad so i'm just going to pass in published ad and then here i'm just going to say request published ad okay so let's try this out i'm just going to create some title some description and then for the wizy week i'm just going to have a large bold text the title and then let me just come to lipsum.com and copy some lorem ipsum text this is some really good dummy text content i'll copy that come right here and paste it right here okay awesome and then with the publish that i can go ahead and select a date when i want this to be published maybe in april at 5 pm and then i'm gonna select a really beautiful image for this blog post right here and i'll create the post and you can see it says post created successfully let's check out our database with sql pro so i'm just going to open up sql pro right here set up the host 127.0.0.1 root and if i select the cms database check out the post look at that so you can see the content is actually html i'm sorry i can zoom my screen more but just try to have a look so the content is actually html because of our WYSIWYG editor or our tricks editor and then if you check out the published ad it has been populated right there so we have the published ad date and in future what we're going to be doing is if the published ad date is still ahead in the future it means that this article has not been published and we're not going to display it to the user okay so that's the functionality for having the WYSIWYG editor and the date picker in our application all right so make sure you implement this in your own applications and i'll catch you up in the very next lesson